Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, last week I promised a Space Marine surprise, and I don't think there's anything more surprising to anybody who knows me than the fact that I would paint Chaos. Now, I have done Alpha Legion on the channel before, but I thought it would be time to swap things up, go to the standard, if you will, in the form of the Black Legion. Now, Black Legion are... <laughs> They're kind of cool. I do like the doofy, almost rands of the Chaos Legions. Uh, they don't get as much love as anybody else does, but they are the forefront of the war against the Imperium in a lot of cases. So whether you are adding them to a kill team or an army in order to bulk out some troop choices, or you actually like Abaddon's <laughs> bad boys, uh, this is how I would paint them. Now, there are a few experiments going on here, so it's a little slower to get started than you might ordinarily see, but not to worry. All of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now, I'm assured that the easiest way to paint these guys is to start with the trim color painted and then to paint in the armor, which, having done Alpha Legion previously, I think is probably going to be true. So, I've started by priming this guy with Retributor armor. And as with all primers, you know, you're probably going to end up missing a little. So I've got some Retributor armor from the pot here, and I've got one of the large dry brushes from the Army Painter. But any, any big old brush will do the job here. All I'm going to do is quickly go around the model and just tidy up some of the areas where I know this stuff is going to be gold. Let God, that's shiny. <laughs> it's a little hard to to get on screen with it being so shiny. But anyhow, all the gold stuff, let's just give it one quick pass with some Retributor armor from the pot. Now that really doesn't take particularly long at all. What's gonna help us speed up and shave some time off the painting is the order in which we do things. So I'm actually moving to Lead Belcher because as far as our paint's concerned, gold is essentially just a fancy yellow primer. So I'm gonna avoid the gold I do not care one jot if I get this on anything that's going to be black later. So any details like his bleedy horn thing on the front of his helmet, uh, the bobbles on his, what do you call it, power plant, all the silver stuff, we're going to paint that in now with our lead belcher. Now there actually wasn't as much silver detailing on this fellow as I thought there was. Now there's a little on his back, and of course you can choose if any skull details and what have you are going to be. Uh, on his pistol here, because I'm going to make the casing black, I've left this skull in gold, but it's much of a much. What we're going to do now is actually to dry brush the whole miniature. And the reason for this is if we were to dry brush him later on, then the Necron compound that we're going to use, this happy little chappy here, would look quite silver. But because we're going to dry brush it and then shade the miniature, that silver is going to be dulled down a little and look a bit more brassy. So, what we're going to need is a bit of old kitchen towel, a ragged old makeup brush, our Necron compound, and here I have some card of any cardboard will do the job, and I've just sprayed it in black. And you'll hear there's a little bit of a surface to it. Now this is going to be perfect for seeing what we're going to leave behind on our miniature before we apply it to, well, the miniature. <laughs> so, we'll start off, get some Necron Compound into my bristles here. Not very much. Then we'll work that into the bristles until we're leaving pretty much nothing left on a bit of kitchen towel. And then we can take a shot at our card. And by passing over this a few times, we'll see, well, you might not see actually with the way the lighting works here, but with a circular motion, there we go. I'm starting to build up that silver. That's Perfect. So once I'm satisfied with that, what I can do is start dry brushing my marine. Now I want to concentrate towards the edges of detail, so up on his pointy pointy shoulder pads here for example, and I might actually need a little bit more paint fairly quickly. But you can quite happily dry brush the whole miniature, because parts that are going to be silver as well will also benefit from a little bit of Necron compound. So you'll see we get a slightly faded silvery effect on the edge of any of those brassy details and it tones down that gold so it doesn't look quite so bright and shiny which is going to be perfect for our veterans of a 10,000 year old angry angry war. 
Now, once you've gone around the miniature a couple of times, you'll see that it leaves this neat burnished finish. Now, on some of the areas like the shoulder pads, don't worry if it's not perfect. A little irregularity is actually going to really help with our, well, their chaos. You know? <laughs> so we're going to do now the black. And uh, unfortunately, Abaddon Black is not up to the task. I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to suggest instead you go for a Vallejo Black. Now, the coverage on this I find much better. It's not quite as smooth a finish, but by the time we're done and we actually varnish the miniature, you're not going to see a difference. This is going to save your sanity versus doing two or three coats of Abaddon Black. Now, I do suggest you want to water this down just a little runnier than you might think, um, because it's going to make it easier to fit into some of the cracks and crevices we're going to be painting. So you'll see straight away, it works rather well. Just slow down when you come near any outcroppings or pointy bits, and you can push it. Rather than trying to paint a straight line across an area, just push your bristles into that shape, there we go, and there is that black. So, is this going to be faster than painting all of the trim by hand? And I cannot give you a straight answer to that, let's find out. Now, I'll be honest with you, that was so boring. <laughs> it took me about 40 minutes to get the black all over this dude, and it looks cool once it's finished. Is there a faster way of doing it? I don't know, because either you're painting the black around the trim, or you're painting the trim in two or three coats over black. I, I can't say if there's a quick way of doing it. It looks very striking, but this trim is 100% the reason. I don't have a Chaos Army. Nuts to painting this. Uh, if you have the mental fortitude to paint a Chaos Army, I salute you. We're going to move on, though, from the black, and I have here Evil Sun Scarlet. Now I'm going to paint in just a couple of red details now, and we're going to use a very bright red to do it, because we are going to shade pretty much everything at once. Now there are also a few little sort of jutting bone details, teeth and what have you, poking out of his armor, and for this I'm going to use Morgast Bone. Just a quick coat of this over what is mostly yellow will do the job. And when it comes to any leather details like pouches or holsters, I have here Mournfang Brown. And I really like this one because it's going to add just a little bit of warmth to what is quite a dark figure. So let's get in there. Get in there. And you'll find in some cases, like particularly on his belt where we've probably painted most of that black, it's going to take two coats. On the subject of variety, I have here a little Vallejo Black Grey. Um, if you wanted to stick to Citadel products, this could just as easily be Eschen Grey. And I'm going to use this to paint in the undersuit, so that there's a little bit of variation between the black and what I guess would be a rubberized sort of compound. Now once you've reached this stage, you're probably going to have one or two little spots of the gold that you might have had, no matter how careful you've been trying to be. For tidying this stuff up, uh, in his gauntlet there is a good spot. Instead of going back to Retributor Armor, I'm using here Liberator Gold. This is a gold color with a silvery sort of touch to it, so it's going to look fairly close to our dry brushed uh, base coat. And same too with the silver, you can touch it with a little bit of lead belcher again. You don't need to worry too much about this not matching the dry brushed version. Now when it comes to grenades, traditionally crack grenades are red. I'm using corn red here because it's going to be nice and easy. And this is also another color that's going to be useful if you've got any top knots or tassels, any hanging bits of cloth, corn red will be a good choice for those. Now after any last minute tidy up, at last we are ready for our big old brush, anything you like, and some Agrax Earthshade. And when it comes to this, you cannot put too much of it on. Uh, it is really up to you how grimy and dark you want your gold to look. But once you've prepped up your brush, let's go ahead and just start jamming this. Oh, that's satisfying. We're just going to go all over the miniature, really work it into any recesses. Uh, bits that you might have missed with the black during that tidy up stage, just jam a decent portion of Agrax Earthshade on them and they're going to look like <laughs> trim in the recesses. It'll be fine. 
So go nuts with this. This is by far, this is what we're all working towards. This feels pretty good. And once this has all been applied, we'll give it about 30 minutes to dry. Now, so help me, that actually does look kind of cool. Once that's finished, that work, it does look like it's paying off. What we want to do now is to highlight the black. And honestly, there's a couple of ways you can go about this. You could painstakingly paint it in in the traditional way, probably using Dark Reaper, maybe a little thin Rizzy in gray. Uh, there are some very good examples on the box, of course, but we're looking to save time. So I have here a little old makeup brush still and some Storm Fang. So I'm going to scrub most of this into a bit of kitchen towel, same as before. And if you're not confident about how much you're going to be leaving behind, remember that sprayed cardboard trick. Then we'll pick an area where we're going to get the most return out of this. So these ridged areas on the back of his pack are going to be a convenient spot to try this. Just go slow when you come near any of the uh, steel and what have you that you have already painted. But after a couple of passes, you'll find you get a fairly decent quick dry brush highlight there. So I'm going to go around all of the black, uh, particularly areas like up on the uh, corners of his pack thingy-me-jigger here. Might need a little more paint. But yeah, it's up to you now how much of this you want to do. Uh, if you think it looks good or not, that's your call. But I tend to find for getting a nice quick blue-black highlight, uh, Storm Fang and a quick dry brush will do you just fine. Now that will take a little bit of practice, and in some areas you're going to want to come back and basically go over the same area a couple of times. You do want some fresh paint to do that. But it is a nice quick way of getting a very simple blue-black highlight. Works great. What we'll do now is just go back to a tiny weird bit of black, and I'm going to paint in the eye, I guess it is, on the front of this dude's armor. Don't need to be terribly precise with this. And then, just so that nobody yells at you about not drilling the bolters, you can paint a little black dot at the end of the gun so that the bullets can come out. The one step which will always improve the look of a miniature is to add any decals you might have for it. So first off, I'm actually going to apply a varnish. Now I've got here the Army Painter's Gloss Varnish, but you could just as easily use uh, Storm Shield. It was literally the closest one I had to hand. So I'm just going to apply a thin layer of gloss where my decal is going to go. And while that varnish dries, go ahead and cut out the decals that you want to use, and pop them on a little bit of kitchen towel. I'm then going to douse it with water. And the idea here is that the backing paper is going to be sitting on something which is still wet. So rather than having to try and hold this decal in the water with a pair of tweezers, Instead, yeah, we can just leave it somewhere wet, and that gives us a lot more time to work with it, which is going to be pretty handy. So we'll let this soak through, and you'll notice after a while, probably about 30 seconds to a minute, when you wiggle it with your brush, it will start to slide around a little. Now don't try forcing it off straight away, give it another 20 seconds or so, and then it will slide straight off really easily. Now once that is sliding around on the paper, grab the edge of it with your tweezers, a little bit of water just off your brush there, and we will slide that into place. We will slide that into place. There we go. <laughs> and while it's still wet, just flood underneath the decal, and you'll be able to position that a little more easily. Now once it's in position, we're going to leave that for about half an hour to dry. Transfers and decals, they will normally shrink a little bit as they dry, so it'll tighten to the surface of that rounded shoulder pad. Now once that's settled, you'll see that it takes the shape of the shoulder pad quite well, actually. Most of the Chaos uh, decals tend to, because they are pretty much the right shape for just this little gap that you've got there. It's actually quite difficult to show that off with it being so shiny. Now it's up to you how much more of this fella you'd like to highlight. You could highlight the um, leather, I'd use a little bit of scrag brown there, uh, a little bit of a shapty bone to do the bone details, funnily enough. But that's up to you. I think for the purposes of a finished Black Legion Chaos Space Marine, that's going to be plenty. So what I'm going to do is take him outside. Now I quite often say I'm going to use a matte varnish. This time I am going to use Munitorum varnish from Citadel. Reason being is it's got a very slight satin finish, which I tend to find 
looks really nice on power armor. Once I've done that, that's had time to settle. I'm going to go ahead and give him a quick base. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our Black Legionnaire is complete. Now, ordinarily, this is where I'd say I really had a good time painting him. And that would not be true. <laughs> he was a lot of work, a lot of fiddly work. But I do think, after having given it a shot, that starting with the trim color and then painting the armor color over the top of that is going to give you more reliable results. Uh, I don't think it's any faster. That's not true but it is easier in the long run, especially when the trim is kind of the star of the show when it comes to these Marines. So thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support really is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below, my Twitter and Facebook, and Instagram are both linked there too, are all linked there too, not both. Goodness me. Anyhow, you all enjoy the rest of your day.